And did you inform him about the uh, assignments, by the way? Uh, okay, so I read speed reading from no, no, third did, to fourth. Did you remind Murad? Did you remind Murad about the assignments? Uh, yeah, I think he told him. Can you can you do it? How about his health? Does his uh, health? I didn't uh, oh, uh -huh. or not, but as I'm as I know, he doesn't like stand up. He lays in the bed. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he did homework or not. Okay, he can't uh, do anything else, right? Huh? He can't do anything else? Including yeah. the exams. Okay, no problem. And hopefully he's going to be much better after his uh, recovery. Mm -hmm. So uh, how about you? And you were talking about your assignments. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, I read speed reading. Um, mm -hmm. Fourth chapter, third and fourth chapter. Also, I uh, did the words in bar Barons from 11th to uh, 20th um, topic, mm -hmm. uh, lesson. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you okay. said to watch the lectures, and I did, uh, I, I watched the first lecture um, about the listening. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, how about on a daily basis uh, assignment? Uh, uh, are yeah. you doing it on a daily basis, uh, every day you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I watched some videos, and uh, as you said, I've speeded them, uh, like I've changed the speed um, to the two and one and a half, and also, uh, yeah, I watched okay. them, uh, and I repeated them too. Okay, copy listening. Uh, but you watched only one video lesson, right? Y yeah. Mm -hmm. So, can you do it every day? For example, every day one new video lesson. We watched only uh, one video lesson, or every day one new lesson. Uh, no, I mm, sometimes I cannot watch it every day, and if I don't, for example, I watch two videos, for example, in a, in a, another day like that. Okay, and which means uh, since our last lesson uh, there were uh, two or three days, which means you have already completed two or three video lessons, right? Since Saturday. Uh, no, I watched only one on Sunday because yesterday mm -hmm. and today we didn't, we had some problems with the network. Kind of mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So where do you live, by the way? Huh? Where do you live? In which uh, part I... of Azerbaijan do you live? Which part of the lesson what? In which part of Azerbaijan do you live? Ah, I live in Baku. No, no. Uh, which part of Baku? Uh, in Amerjan ne or mm -hmm. uh, near or, the Hatay, Hatay Metro. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how about Murat? Murat, if mm -hmm. I'm not mistaken, uh, Razina or somewhere there. Mm -hmm. I'm not actually like familiar with those places so okay but mm -hmm. i think it's there like okay I, I got it mm -hmm. all right and what did you learn about the lecture that you watched about the importance of listening as a guest out you watched the importance of listening uh yeah uh i actually really liked the teacher he, uh -huh. he spoke very clearly i understood uh -huh. everything all uh -huh. of his words Mm -hmm. And about the listening, he said so many things that are related to me. I think that he said like things that are related to each speaker. Like all of the things that he said were true about mm -hmm. the listening. That sometimes you cannot concentrate, that there is a difference between hearing and listening. Uh, he, he started the lesson uh, with like he said that some people uh, get, get like a bit shocked excited like when they hear the topic of the lesson not like excited but uh probably a bit sad disappointed disappointed uh okay. be because they say that um they listen for like they know how to listen they listen for a long time since they were born but mm -hmm. uh at that at that moment he said that there is a difference between hearing and listening that it's not the yeah. same thing yeah. um yeah, and then he started explaining how to listen, how to listen properly, uh, mistakes of listening, like uh, there are 
three kinds of mistakes um, and solutions to them, kinds of listening. And I really liked it. Like, mm -hmm. all of the things were related to me. I think it's going to help me in listening um, mm -hmm. in TOEFL. Uh, yeah, hopefully. And also, uh, the other lectures are also related to the academic skills, which uh, in combined uh, collaboration is going to contribute towards your overall success. And mm -hmm. hopefully to Murat's as well. And uh, let me ask you uh, other uh, assignments that I, you've already been, uh, let's say, tasked. It was about uh, essential words and reading college reading books, right? Uh, sounds like mm -hmm. uh, 10 steps to imp improving college reading. Did, did you study that one as well? I studied, uh, yeah, speed reading, uh, speed reading and vocabulary. Interful. Okay, uh, which chapters did you study? Speed reading? Uh, where? No, uh, uh, speed yeah, yeah, I just remembered. Uh, I didn't ask you from the college reading book, right? Yeah, yeah. 10 steps to college reading. Okay, mm -hmm. no matter. And previously you studied vocabulary in context from that book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and now we're going to deal with some, uh, let's say, let's get started again with fun. Uh, I'm going to share with uh, you my screen. Mm -hmm. Again, this guy. So what's his name? Do you know his name? Uh, Joel Austin. Uh -huh, Joel Austin. So mm -hmm. he's a ceremony provider in Texas area. So uh, let's just listen and then you're going to, as always, uh, summarize whatever the information that's been provided by him. If it is fine or not, it depends on the cultural context and background of the individuals. Sometimes it's not fine, sometimes not. But we're going to uh, have a look. And then uh, he's going to talk a little bit more abstract issues related to the, let's say, keeping growing on something or on everything. You're going to listen and brief the information by summarizing the main features. So, uh, let me just share the sound as well. Share computer sound. So, uh, are you ready to listen? Yeah. Okay, let's get started. But thanks so much for tuning in and thank you again for coming out today. Is there any problem with the sound? Did you hear uh, it? I like to start. Yeah, yeah. I, I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get started. Start with something funny and I heard about this lady. She was on an airplane reading her Bible. Uh, did we listen to this? Yeah. Uh, wait, uh, you mean we watched about uh, faith? Activating faith and fear, uh -huh. but I think this we didn't watch. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get uh, let's continue. I like to start with something funny, and I heard about this lady. She was on an airplane reading her Bible. The man sitting next to her said, "You don't believe all that stuff in there, do you?" She said, "Of course I do. It's the Bible." He said, "Well, what about that guy that got swallowed by a whale?" She said, "Oh, you mean Jonah? Yes, I believe that too." He said, well, how could he possibly live that long inside of a well? She thought about it a moment, said, I don't know. When I get to heaven, I'll have to ask him. He said sarcastically, what if he's not in heaven? She said, then you're going to have to ask him. <laughs> Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. can, you, can, can you rephrase it? Yeah, so lady, she was reading a Bible uh, mm -hmm. in an airplane in the mm -hmm. Oh, there was some, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, there was a man uh, sitting right next to her, and he looked at the book that she was reading, and he said, uh, "You're not reading Bible, are you? Are you believing in all of the stuff that are in there?" Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And she said, "Of course, I do believe. I, I do." Um, and as he, he asked her a question, um, something about God, do you believe that God, God? Uh, something uh, indeed like I, uh, it's not it's not god because uh god cannot be so uh, god, uh, god swallowed by uh, let's say a whale or something uh, they say a prophet as god in christianity they say prophet god there's no difference sometimes therefore uh, I, they, they say it like that it's indeed about uh -huh. jonah do you know jonah uh no mm -hmm. jonah is the name of the prophet 
Okay, uh, Joseph, uh -huh. Prophet Joseph, and Prophet Jonah. Uh -huh. Jonah, Eunice. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So and he got a small whale, as I understood. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that, the man asked her a question, and she answered, "I don't know." Uh, mm -hmm. But if when I will go to heaven, I will ask God about that. And mm -hmm. a man said that, what if you're not going to see him? What if he's not in heaven? And she said, then you're going to see that. Because then you're going to ask that mm -hmm. from him. So what's tomorrow? What is on this? Oh, why, the, why is it funny? Uh, probably because the man will be in hell, as I understood. Yeah. Probably. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a Christian joke. Okay. Uh, but uh, mm -hmm. there's also a sarcasm that uh, he says, what if he's not in heaven? He's just making a presumption that maybe he's not in presumption and maybe he's not in, uh, in paradise or in heaven, So, which is not the case. And that's mm -hmm. why she answered it uh, this way. Okay, now uh, we're going to listen to the content. Is, is, is it, uh, let's say, funny for you or not? I want to yeah, it is. A little bit, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to listen to a short lecture about keep growing. Okay, and you, you're required to take notes when it's necessary. And afterward, I'm going to ask you about some uh, travel related types of questions. Okay, for example, mm -hmm. uh, talking about the details, talking about the, or asking about the gist, asking about some uh, inferences. Okay. Let's get yeah, started. Mm -hmm. Talk to you today about keep growing. Too many people suffer from destination disease. They've reached a certain level, attained a goal. Now they're coasting off of what they've already learned. Studies tell us that 50% of people, after they graduate from high school, will never read an entire book the rest of their life. One reason is we see learning as a period of life instead of a way of life. We learned when we were growing up in school. We had teachers, coaches, parents that taught us, expected us to learn. But now we think, I'm out of school, done with my training, I've got my job. But God never created us to reach one level and stop. Whether you're 90 years old or nine years old, we should constantly be learning improving our skills, getting better at what we do. You have to take responsibility for your growth. Growth is not automatic. What steps are you taking to get better? Are you reading books, listening to teaching CDs? Are you taking any courses on the internet, going to any seminars? Do you have any mentors? Are you gleaning from people that know more than you? Don't just coast through life relying off of what you've already learned. You have treasure on the inside. There is skill, talent, potential put in you by the creator of the universe, but it's not gonna automatically come out. It has to be developed. And I read where the wealthiest places on earth are not the oil fields of the Middle East, nor the diamond mines of South Africa. The wealthiest places are the cemeteries. Buried in the ground are businesses that were never formed, songs that were never sung, books that were never written, potential that was never realized, dreams that never came to pass. Don't let that be you. Don't go to your grave with your treasure still in you. Keep growing, keep learning. Pablo Casas was one of the greatest cellist players that ever lived. He started playing at the age of 12 and he accomplished things that no other musician did. He was known around the world as the best in his field. At 85, he still got up every morning and practiced five hours a day. A reporter asked him why he still put so much effort into it. He smiled and said, I think I'm getting better. He understood this principle. When you stop learning, you stop growing. Whatever you do, get better at it. Sharpen your skills. Don't you dare be at the same place next year as you are right now. There is so much opportunity to learn. There is more knowledge available today than any time in history. We have no excuse to not improve. We don't even have to go to the library like we did in old days. 
You don't even really have to go to the university. The internet comes right into our living rooms. It wasn't created just to share pictures and look up movie times and play games. That's all fine, but it is a tool to help you learn, a tool to help you increase. You have a responsibility, not only to God, not only to your family, but you owe it to yourself to develop what God's put in you. If you're in sales, get better at it. Read books to learn how to communicate more effectively. People have gone where you're going. Listen to what they have to say. Take at least 15 minutes a day, turn off the television, and invest in yourself. You should be doing something strategic and something intentional every day to improve your skills. Not vague, all right, Joel, I'll do it if I have time. No, you're better than that. Okay, I think uh, this is now. And can you tell me uh, about this, uh, let's say, lecture, that whatever it's all about? Yeah, okay, so um, the speaker's name is uh, Joel Austin. Mm -hmm. um, and the topic of the lecture is keep growing. So at first he started his speech with um, destination disease. He said that many people have such kind of a disease when they uh, don't grow, like after a year, they are at the same position as they were in a uh, previous year. And he said, uh, he exemplified, he gave us an example uh, in statistics, uh, like 50% of all of the people that graduate after uh, after school, they don't read any books, or they any don't book read. Or no, he said one book uh, to read. An entire book. They don't yeah. complete an entire. Maybe they read uh, ten books, but they cannot complete the entire book. Fifty yeah. percent of the graduates. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, after that, he said that learning is not a period of your life. Learning is like a way in your life. A so way of life, is... lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like lifestyle. He said that it doesn't matter if you're 90 or 19, uh, you still have to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, he said that growth, like it does, it, it's not automatic. You have mm -hmm. to grow, you have to keep going, like you have to do something for yourself. And he said uh, something about, um, for example, like, I uh, know, he said that about the wealthiest. Um, places in our world, like Africa, for example, uh, about the brilliant, and Middle East about oil. Uh, and he said it's not the wealthiest place, the wealthiest... Um, uh, the the wealth, wealthiest places in the world mm -hmm. are where? Yeah, yeah, the wealth is not in, the, in there, it's in our like songs that were in song, dreams, uh, businesses, and other stuff, books that are, were not read. Okay, um, what's the name of that place that the businesses that have never formed or uh, that have never been formed or the songs that have never been sung? What's the name of that place? Cemeteries. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Cemetery is the place where uh, there are lots of graves and there are lots of dead people and they're buried down with their potential. And don't let that be you, was the recommendation given by the, uh, by, by the speaker. Okay, go ahead. Then he gave us an example of uh, Pablo Casso. Uh, mm -hmm. He said that he was playing uh, all of his life. Um, um, for, when he was 12 years old, he was playing and he started playing. And when he was 85, uh, he still practiced uh, five hours a day. And after that, uh, he said that um, for example, one reporter, interviewer asked him, why are you practicing? And he said, I think I'm getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, so what's the moral of it? Uh, the moral is that you don't have to stand in one position for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to learn and you have to get better each year. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you never need to stop. Instead, you need to always, uh, always be in progress. Uh, putting some efforts, time, and energy into whatever you do, you've been doing. Okay, go ahead. Excellent. Go on. Yeah, and uh, he said that, uh, for example, uh, like in the past, people didn't have 
um, they had to go to the libraries to learn some new stuff. But now we have internet in our living rooms and we have to use this opportunity. We have to use internet as a tool to help you to learn, not uh, just watching movies or playing video games or I don't know, um, some entertaining stuff. Mm -hmm. Entertaining stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said that we have to have the responsibility not only to God, not only to our family, but also to ourselves. We have to feel it ourselves, that we have to grow that we have to learn each year more than we did in the previous year. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. How about your own self-reflection about it? What do you think about this field? Uh, what new commentaries that you'd like to add here? If you had to I continue this speech. I agree with him. I also always um, thought that people have to uh, reach, like achieve um, something more like there is no uh, term in like I I did it and that's all that I have I can relax you don't have to relax you have to go ahead because life is such kind of, for example sometimes my grandma she always says that I'm old why should I start for example learning English or German and I don't understand this like uh, way of thinking it, you're never old like you have to you can mm -hmm. learn whenever, whenever you want and mm -hmm. want. irrespective of your age yeah yeah mm -hmm. and so that's why i fully agree with the speaker mm -hmm. okay. okay but uh let's think from the different side uh what might be the some uh, instances that you would disagree let's say that now you are and uh, there are two teams and it's a kind of debate and you need to disagree, regardless of your opinion. In that case, how would you disagree with this guy? Let's challenge you, you know, ch challenge you a bit in order to think from the opposite side, not from your own opinion. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh, I probably think that not all of people are able to learn something new. Like, yeah. uh, actually, age does matter because their mind, it's like, Mm -hmm. um, the decreasing linear curve, like it goes, uh, they don't remember information as well as they did in their youth. That's why it probably it's a bit hard for them to learn something new in their age. Yeah. So that's probably where I think. Mm -hmm. How about the other effects or other factors that can contribute towards, uh, let's say, the learning process negatively? Mm -hmm. Example. Uh, can there be a difference between two people in terms of their learning effectiveness? For example, there are 10 students in the class. Not all of them are successful, right? Mm -hmm. Even though that there are five students who are constantly and collaboratively uh, working towards their success together, okay? but two of them are successful, three of them, irrespective of their efforts, they are failing. Why is that? Well, people are different and each person has their, like, its own character, its mm -hmm. own uh, um, ambitions in life. Mm -hmm. So, uh, some people are ambitious, um, self-confident, and they have a goal. Other people, they are a bit, um, not like not self-ambitious, but they are like calm. They are um, satisfied with the position that they have and they don't want more. So I think that not all people have to learn more, have to go ahead. Like it's a personal opinion. If a person wants to, he can do whatever he wants. If he wants to be better next year, he can work on that and be better. But if he doesn't and he likes to sit on the sofa or I don't know, relax, mm -hmm. it's his opinion. So we cannot uh, judge him for that. And also there are different, like, I think that each person is talented in the way he, like, he doesn't have to learn something to be um, special, for example, um, or like not all people have to learn. So if you have some kind of special talent, for example, art, or I don't know, um, some, you are creative, for example, or if you're not like, mm, or maybe you are, um, good at tools at instruments and other stuff like building something and uh, so it's it's your thing and um yeah 
so it's like a personal stuff each person is special by himself and it doesn't matter ma matter like uh if you go ahead or not it's like a personal opinion actually in germany japan and in northern european countries like finland and sweden uh, they apply the kind of system the education system that uh people are uh let's say are identified by their persona that uh, whatever he might be or she might be in the future and they're just guided towards there but due to some misguidance by the uh, educational uh, career specialists or maybe academic counselors or sometimes uh, by the parents uh, some students or some uh, children are forced to be uh, let's say become a businessman or a lawyer which probably are not going to work for them Therefore, uh, it's uh, sometimes based on the misguidance. Everyone can learn, but it does mean that everyone can, can learn everything. They can learn whatever suits their needs, whatever they can be successful in the future. So we have to identify that one as well. Okay. So uh, any other uh, point that you'd like to state? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to do the vocabulary in context uh, tests. Okay, uh, you're going to read and uh, let me share my screen here. So let's, 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 okay, I got it. So share the screen. Can you see my screen? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is the book, a book called uh, Master the TOEFL Vocabulary by Peterson. And you have this book. And also I'm going to uh, test you some, uh, inf uh, some uh, let's say, relevant assignments from here as well. And mm -hmm. indeed, there's so many things to be done in order to be uh, very successful. But we're going to do it very quickly uh, based on uh, your SAT previously you have the SAT preparation. So let's just get uh, through it uh, very, very fast. Okay. Uh, but also, I'm going to in order uh, to avoid some, uh, let's say, confusion points, some, uh, let's say, gaps in your learning uh, process in your previous studies. We're going to test them, uh, some of them, once again. So this is the question uh, with an example that the answer is being given here. The American Revolution was fought to gain autonomy. What does autonomy mean? It means self, uh, self rule. Yeah, and here's the uh, answer. So uh, we can identify the words by means of their roots and uh, prefixes and suffixes also from the words in context. Uh, did you have such kind of, uh, let's say, did you read such kind of information from the 10th Steps to College Reading Book? Did you see the prefixes and suffixes, words, roots, and ten? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's get started from here. You're going to read and tell me whatever you think about the meaning of the underlined word. Mm -hmm. you ready? Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I have to read, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he had, he had reached the zenith of his career when he became president of General Motors. Uh, Zenith, as I know, it's uh, like the highest point, so it's D, Summit. Okay, well done. Go to the next one. Uh, uh, then the road west gave access uh, to the lake. Mm -hmm. I think it's a B approach, probably. Mm -hmm. uh, seems like you wouldn't have any pronunciation uh, issues. Would you like to do it on yourself by writing down on your paper or? Written out loud. If uh, yeah, written out loud, it's, it's, which one is I'm going to you? read. Uh, I'm going to do it by myself then, and then read you the answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're starting from three. Mm
Mm-hmm. Um, so three is. Six? Ah yeah. Okay. No, uh, no. Should I? There are there are many questions. Uh huh. Okay. Let's just get uh, first a go through them. What about six? Sweden. You can just read the words and then think about its meaning, right? If you exactly mm-hmm. know the meaning of it, then you don't have to read the whole uh, whole stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, could you tell me the tense question? Uh, could you show me the um, number thirteen? Yeah, thirteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then there's some of the words, and then I know the meaning of the words from the context in some question. Mm-hmm. And some. Um, yeah. Let's go to question number So well, let's do the 20 question, okay? Uh, mm-hmm. Just do the uh, 19 and 20, and then we're going to check a few more. Okay. Okay.
Okay, we finished. I'm still recording and Is that frozen internet connection? Close. It's close recording. Resume the recording. Okay, I think it's now playing. Okay, go on. Go on and tell me the answers. And can you see the question, by the way? Uh, yeah. Yes? Okay, go on. Go on. Uh, three is D. Question number three is D, correct. Uh, four is D. Mm -hmm. uh, five is D. Text, five I is, think. Five is not D. Uh -huh, okay. So, um, uh, the answer is B. Okay, litigation is lawsuits related to law or legislation. Okay. Okay. The rule was settled. Do you know what does will mean here? The will. Mm -hmm. Do you know what does will mean in this context? The will was yeah, settled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, what about six? Six B, I think. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, seven, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, seven uh, C. Correct. Uh, How about eight? eight? Eight D. D? Traditional. D, D, traditional. No, it's not traditional. The answer is B, cautious. Okay, the bill is uh. conservative estimate of the time. Okay, conservative means that they're uh, paying attention to everything because they cannot rely on the mod modern styles or any other traditional style. They have to be conservative. They have to, let's say, uh, I would say that you would be confused between B and C because conservative and protective, they are exactly the similar meaning. But in this context, uh, it's not related to the protection because it's about the estimate that they're just making some estimation or calculations so it's about the cautious that you need to be very cautious of the time required to remodel okay mm -hmm. uh nine is nine? uh a correct a uh ten yeah t ten, ten is, is b uh-huh example mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. B. Eleven. Eleven is uh, C. Thickness. C. Yeah, C. And twelve. Uh, twelve is uh, also C. Quarrels. Right. Quarrels. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, Thirteen. 13 um, I think it's B. Be quick. Uh, indeed, <laughs> they're relevant, but uh, A is proper here. The right, uh, the right cross made an equitable or just distribution of the. Do you know what does mean just? Yeah, no, but I thought that it was like a quick distribution, like fast. Equitable, equal, okay? Uh, they're related words, equal, equality, okay, related to the justice. Mm -hmm. okay, well, how about 13? Uh, 14. 18. I'm sorry. I think it's B. Correct. Fifteen is B. Uh, fifteen is also B. Fifteen is not B, unfortunately. Boycotted. Uh, do you know what does blackmail mean? Probably you know what does boycott mean, because we uh, we, we have it in our own language, Russian language as well. Uh -huh. How about blackmail? Yeah, I know the meaning of the word. Mm -hmm. So the blackmail is something related to the intimidation that you intimidate or frighten someone, okay, mm -hmm. or threaten someone. But it's not the kind of jeopardy. They're just taking some kind of, uh, let's say, action against it. And in case then, of the such kind of question, okay, then, then the answer I is. I think probably C. 
Yeah, but you don't know what the meaning of C, right? Sham. Mm -hmm. Okay, in case of such circumstances, you can have a look at it. Firstly, you have to replace the words, okay? Blackmail, if you feel like that the answer is blackmail, you have to replace it and uh, find out whether or not it's relevant in this context. So, if you find out that B is not the answer, then attend it and left, they are not relevant here. So you don't know the meaning of C, but probably the answer is she. Okay, sham. Sham means take action against someone by not yeah, buying, yeah. purchasing something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's get ahead in question number 16. Sorry, 16 is? Uh, e. Period. E? Period, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, 17 is C. People who take part. Mm -hmm. uh, 18 is A, accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Accomplishment, correct. Uh, 19 is uh, B, mm -hmm. time sequence. And 20 is D. <clears throat> okay. Very good. And now we're going to do, uh, we can either continue or go to the next test. Let's continue. This time. Let's continue. From 21. Okay, you get started. Um, mm -hmm. Just inform me as you are ready to the other questions. Mm -hmm. As the questions progresses, the difficulty level also progresses. Um, where is uh, wretched? Sorry? Uh, wretched. You're asking the meaning, of, the meaning of it yeah. or? Yeah, so yeah, the meaning. <clears throat> if I say so, is it going to be a kind of, uh, let's say, cheating or? Let me just uh, tell you like this, that uh, when you feel sorry for someone, okay, that, uh, that, that they are rich, rich because they are unhappy or unfortunate, then uh, we call or we call such people wretched. Oh, okay. Yeah. When, when you feel that it's good for nothing or rest or like war. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, can I change the questions or? Did you uh, yeah. decide on 23? Okay, 20, not 20, there's 24. Okay, 24 and 25. This is 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, 25. Mm -hmm. 25.
Okay. Uh, let's do it until three five this time. Okay. Just first, I think about the meaning of the word in your mind, and then check out the options. Okay. Do you remember the strategy that I told you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait a second. I'm in thirty-two. Sorry, thirty-two. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, could you show me 34? 34 and 35, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, from question number which? 21, 21, uh -huh, go on. Uh, just, a minute, just, just a minute with me, 521. Okay, go on. Uh, 21 is uh, C. Okay. Uh, 22 is B. Mm -hmm. uh, 23 is D. Mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. Four is A. Uh -huh. uh, Twenty-five is uh, D. Correct. Uh, Twenty-six is D. Score. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty. No, it's not D. Beyond my score. Uh, beyond my score. No. Yeah. It's, it's uh, just beyond a my. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. probably opportunity, maybe. Beyond my opportunity. Look at the yeah, sentence. Like, I can jog a few miles, but the Boston Marathon is certainly beyond my scope. Okay. 
And what, what did you say? I'm sorry, once again. And my beyond my like score or opportunity then not the case and my view or range which one do you think is more appropriate here uh Ms. probably beyond range. my potential it's one of the range, uh, uh -huh. range or view range mm -hmm. I think view is, yeah view is about mental contemplation that thinking mm -hmm. okay beyond my scope beyond my view it, it doesn't mm -hmm. suit here okay how about 27 uh, 27 is C, probably. I don't know. C? Organized. Yeah. Militant so is, uh, let me say, uh, mm -hmm. bellig belligerent, like, uh, that wants a war. Okay. But here, mm -hmm. we find the so it's, most... It has nothing to do with organization, right? The militia might be organized and disorganized, depending on the situation, depending on the location and opportunities. But uh, militants are those who are strongly committed to do something. Okay. Mm. So they, mm -hmm. Therefore, okay. the answer is uh, B. B. And mm -hmm. how about 28, 9? 28, I think it's B. Um, what do you think like that? Uh, like is, currently, uh -huh. yeah. same time. Mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's beyond your thinking. You have to definitely know that. You haven't yeah, you ever yeah. used this as this word in your sentences in the writing or in the speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, go on. 29 mm -hmm. is C. 29 is C, uh, correct. Um, 30 is A. Uh-huh. Uh, 31 is A. Mm -hmm. uh, How about 32? 32, probably B. 32, B, correct. Thirty-three is uh, D. Okay. Uh, Thirty-four is uh, D. Come. Thirty-four is not D. Or maybe var various. Yeah. Various? No, a various material for whom? Yeah, like no. versatile. Uh, as I know, uh, versatile. This word it means various itself. But in this context, um, mm -hmm. I don't know. So that maybe. It D common. So, um, but isn't it the opposite of it? Common versus various. The uh, the answer is a useful a useful material for home construction is food. Mm. Mm -hmm. In this context, uh, it means that it's useful. Okay, in many ways. Okay, it has the multi purpose, the okay, multi functional. Mm -hmm. Uh, how about the 35? 35, I think it's uh, C. E? Nature. Like nature? wildlife nature. Yeah, or maybe undomesticated animals. Eh? Okay, uh, from use, useless slaughter. What does it mean, slaughter? You know the meaning of that? Uh, slaughter means killing. Ah. Okay. Can we kill the nature? No. Maybe we can, but metaphorically and not literally. But undomesticated animals means not including uh, domesticated animals. Those are about the wildlife. The pre predators then, D. No, no, undomesticated animals. Predators are those who are killing. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, yeah, I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I just wonder why it... Uh, takes some time to answer the question. So we're going to do it on, uh, let's say, a very fast mode. Let's see if we can do that. For example, in question number 36, the, the word that you need to look up or that you need to answer is infuriated. Firstly, tell me whether or not you know the meaning of this word. Infuriated. Uh, infuriated, as I know, uh, was... Mm -hmm. What's um, it related to? I think it's like saddened, A, probably. No. So, infuriated, it's related to, uh, let's say, anger of anger? the person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh -huh. from the word uh, furious, furious, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. So, you need to just, uh, let's say, practice and come up with such kind of solutions to the questions like this. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. How about intramural? Have you ever heard about this word? Uh, uh -huh. Participation no, in intramural sports is required. So first no, of I all, what, what are the clues in this word? Uh, intra, like, intra. What does it mean? Intra, in. Do you, inside. Uh, uh huh. Inside. And do you see something like that? With outsiders. Can we mm -hmm. say so? Can we say no. so? Uh, mm -hmm. How about uh, extraordinary? Anything related? Uh, no, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. Over the three news. Um. No, I think. Mm -hmm. How about the first one? Within the school. Yeah, it's the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, what about uh, on the brink of matrimony, a fled to a desert island? The brink. Have you heard this word ever? Yeah, it's like edge. Uh -huh. Probably. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, if you know the meaning of the word, then quickly write the answer, for example, C or B, a, B or A, then go to the other question. But you need to reflect a bit about the context as well. Okay, just uh, let, let's say in this example, if you feel like that edge might be the proper answer for this question, on the edge of matrimony, he fled to a desert island. Does it make sense? If so, then you don't have to uh, confuse yourself with the other relevant uh, answers because sometimes the answers might be very close to each other that can uh, end up with confusion. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. and probably you've uh, you've seen this word as well. Elicited the information, elicited, yeah. load, grown. Mm -hmm. Elicit, it's like detect, determine. Uh, okay. But here, uh, repeated is not, uh, drew out is not. I think it's A, probably alluded. I don't know. Articulated. What is articulated? Articulate, speak. Okay. Uh, then it's A. State, uh -huh. State indicate. Now, elude, illusion, elusive, it's, uh, it has a different meaning. Ah. You know what that what that means? Elude. Uh, elude. I if, have. If you, like, I uh -huh. think it's uh, sleep, probably avoid. Uh, it means fail to obtain something, fail to attain, fail to get something that you can't get something. Okay, elude. Mm. But there's no anything related here. It's. I, I got it drew out like uh -huh. determined. Uh huh. Okay. How about accelerated? Can you guess the meaning of this? Yeah, I know this word. Uh huh. Uh, city dwellers or people who live in the city are accelerated by the brisk. Uh, by the brisk country. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's A. Uh, amazing. Yeah, or as I know, exhilarated, it's like something connected to air, as I know. Like, uh, no, it's I know it's not. Acceleration, okay. It's related to making somebody happy or more, uh, let's say, motivated about something. It makes okay. you happy, and you, that's why you are uh, you continue doing that. Okay. Mm, so a what, amaze, amaze. No, amaze yeah. doesn't motivate you. Ah, uh, then stimulated. Ah, <clears throat> stimulated is the correct answer. What, what about uh, forty-one? Rejuvenate. Ah, uh, it's Have, um. Make young, young again, probably. Mm -hmm. A. Yeah, juvenile uh, from that uh, word root, mm -hmm. we can guess the meaning. How about affinity? Uh, probably attraction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the last three questions. Uh, intimidated, we talked about that. Yeah, Intimidation. I know. Intimidation. What does it mean? Um, frightened. See. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ostentatious. Have you seen this word? Um, Every other woman at the premiere was aware of the star's ostentatious display of her emeralds. What is emeralds? 
So emeralds, uh, so there is something like, uh, let's say, uh, precious stone or let's say a diamond, something like that, which is shining, okay? Let's say a precious valuable stone. Mm -hmm. It might be a bright color or bright green, something like that. So maybe it's uh, the showy? Yeah, mm -hmm. showy mm -hmm. display. So wealthy display, mm -hmm. although it's, uh, let's say, uh, it's relevant, but uh, it, that's not the case. It has to do with something display. Loud, it doesn't make sense. Oscillating, do you know what this means? Oscillating. Oscillating means hovering, changing very frequently. Okay. Mm -hmm. And how about dispense with the traditions? Uh, Last it's, one. Uh, or omit, probably. D. Yeah, correct. Omit the traditional ceremonies of marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I'm going to change it, uh, change the sharing material to total class R. Okay. So uh, there are two parts of speaking test, as you may know. Okay, the independent part and integrated speaking. And independent part, uh, actually, in the latest uh, changes, which was uh, put into action by uh, in let's say August 2019. Okay, personal. Yeah, exactly one year ago, it, it was put into action. That uh, question type two and five has been omitted from the. Uh, from the TOEFL test, but we're going to have a look at it, all, all of them, because who knows, maybe in the future they can report it, or maybe uh, they can change their minds, or maybe there might be some other uh, related issues that we need to, uh, let's say, advance ourselves. So therefore, uh, independent types of questions, uh, there are, one of them is about the preference questions that ask you to prefer uh, one of two things, for example, do you agree or disagree that we have to, let's say, uh, send our troops to different countries? Okay, it's just up to your opinion, and you need to choose one of the choices. And the other one is about uh, the, let's say, other thing, which also integ uh, integrates your idea. Okay, it's exactly about you. Okay, you don't have to summarize the information by synthesizing it into different sources, just like in integrated speaking. In, in integrated speaking test is uh, a little bit different because you need to uh, demonstrate your real life conditions that however you're going to let's say uh, express yourself in the oral way by uh, both in the uh, it, integrated speaking also has the different variation in this writing test integrated writing so uh, let's just check out the question types that whatever it refers to and what about the timing and however we have to deliver the speech about this. Uh, let's just quickly get through this. Okay. So uh, now you're going to pretend to be a teacher of Murad and you're going to explain that what kinds of questions do we have in the integrated speaking and integrated writing and how do we have to develop ourselves and these kinds of things. Uh, you're going to just strategize some tactics and uh, methods if you want if you want to if you have in mind. Okay, but we're going to detail all of them about uh, all, all of them in our upcoming sessions. But firstly, we need to firstly understand the uh, general overview of the speaking test, writing test, all these skills that are being tested in the TOEFL. And in this case, uh, we're just starting the, to familiarize ourselves. And then uh, it will be easy for us to deal with the tests. Also, I sent you the assignments. I, I believe that it's way too much of your, uh, let's say, potential. You can't do all of them, or maybe you can do it. We're going to just discuss it after the explanation of integrating speaking and uh, writing parts. So, uh, time is yours. Yeah, okay. So, uh, we have different question types, and now I'm going to explain each of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the first question type is, um, question three, campus announcement and conversation. Uh, so uh, it reports uh, on the, ah, you have to report on the opinion of one of the speakers in the conversation and explain why he or she feels that way. So you have 50 seconds to read. 
uh, from 60 to 120 seconds to listen, 30 seconds to prepare, and 60 seconds to speak. Uh -huh. uh, you okay. have to synthesize the information in the listening and reading parts. They're going to be presented a kind of lecture or something. Okay, a campus announcement about, for example, the new meal plans for disabled people or whatsoever. And then uh, the article or maybe a, a short article that can be uh, completed in terms of reading within 60 to 120 seconds. And then you're going to prepare by taking notes that whatever uh, the information are similar, uh, you're going to draw the information uh, like uh, similarities uh, by means of similarities and differences. And within 60 seconds, you need to express yourself that whatever they, uh, whatever announced in the campus announcement and uh, however you need to respond by uh, synthesizing or connecting the information within these two sources. We're going to talk about them uh, at a later and you'll have a bunch of materials to read at home to find out that whatever they mean. But now, uh, for now, it's just, uh, let's say, in, sh in short, I think it's enough. Did you understand it? Mm -hmm. Question two. Okay, well, uh, go ahead. So the next question type is called uh, academic topic and lecture. Um, so you have to explain the academic topic, uh, introduced in the reading, and describe the main points about the topic described in the lecture. Mm -hmm. So you have 50 seconds to read, uh, from 60 to 120 seconds to listen, 30 seconds to prepare, and 60 seconds to speak. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just the same, right? The only yeah. difference is that one of them is about the cam campus con announcement and the other one is conversation. Uh, but in question number four, it will be academic topic and lecture. It's more academic, which might mm -hmm. be a little bit more challenging. But uh, as long as you can understand the given topic and the conversation, then there will be no difference between them. Okay, what about question number five and six? Okay, so next question type is uh, campus conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have to describe the problem of one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, decide which suggestion would be the best. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we have from 120 to 180 seconds to listen. 20 seconds. Convert it to the minutes as well. Okay, within two or three minutes to listen. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, 20 seconds to prepare and mm -hmm. 60 seconds, like one minute to speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the so, next uh, question type. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, it's uh, academic lecture. So uh, the thing that we have to do is sum up the topic and um, main points from the lecture. And we have two or three minutes to listen, 20 seconds to prepare, and um, one minute to speak, like the same as in campus conversation question. So in the latest, in the latest update, in the question number five, campus conversation, uh, this section has been removed. Probably you're not going to see this in the uh upcoming uh, examinations but uh, we're not sure about that therefore we're going to just uh let's say practice that as well okay so uh, at, at least we know that uh, we're not going to miss out any uh, let's say skills by studying that we can gain some skills but not miss out so uh the let's say by omitting one part maybe it's advantageous to the students but uh, it's not advantageous for the future purposes because as long as we are squeezed very much to study harder and smarter, then it means that we have more potential to develop our skills in any field. And therefore, uh, we have to be careful about this. So regardless of whether or not it's going to be tested, I'm not only talking about this one. Maybe I'm going to, uh, to uh, I've just sent you some uh, materials the, uh, through WhatsApp, which you're going to read later. And so uh, mm -hmm. there's so many things that maybe it's not going to be tested in the TOEFL examination, but in the future, in your in terms of your academic research, maybe uh, you'd like to stay in Turkey, right? In Turkey, would you like to pursue your mm -hmm. education in Turkey or? Uh, yeah, I want to study in Turkey. Uh -huh. So uh, maybe after your uh, undergraduate studies, you'd like to continue your uh, studies in. On the master's level in different countries okay you're going uh, yeah, to see exactly. that uh-huh 
you're going to see that there are so many uh, opportunities out there in uh, different parts of the world. And in order to combine the academic skills in terms of uh, synthesis or, let's say, note-taking or I'm just telling you that you need to do speed listening. Maybe uh, not so many is, uh, teachers are recommending this skill because it's not in, needed indeed, but it's going to at least gain you some time advantage over the others, okay, over your candidates. Uh, they're going to listen to, let's say, 10-hour uh, uh, lectures in total within, uh, within a week, but uh, you can watch that 10-hour uh, lectures within uh, six hours if you watch mm -hmm. it with 1.5 or 1.75 speed, okay? And also, as you listen very rapidly, your brain will become faster because there's such kind of rule in physics that uh, the, uh, the object which is in action is about to action and the, uh, the, sub uh, the subject or the object, whichever is in the low share, which cannot move, which is in the stable place, is up to uh, stability. So it's not, it's not moving. So as you mm -hmm. progress, as you do so many things, your brain will become faster, your body will become faster. Whatever the body parts that you're using, it's going to be more effective as you use it. And vice versa, mm -hmm. the uh, opposite side is also true. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next section, the writing section, question types. So this is the last part of the, let's say, Total examination mm -hmm. and the writing. Can you see it? Because I can't see some parts of it because of the uh, visuals. Oh yeah, do you, do you see that I'm changing the position of the, let's say, videos or not? Can you see that? Or you only see my uh, document? I only see the document. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so. The first question type is, mm -hmm. I think, the, the first of all, mm -hmm. uh, integrated essay, academic reading, listening, and writing. Mm -hmm. It has it has to contain three, uh, 250 to uh, 300 words. Mm -hmm. And um, to answer this question, we have to connect the topic of the reading with the academic lecture, mm -hmm. uh, show how the main points in the reading are contrasted by the lecture, and only report on the information that you heard and read. And we have three minutes to uh, read. Had, two or three. You, you heard and read, right? Read, not read. The past four. Ah, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and 20 minutes to write. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is about the integrated, uh, integrated writing, which uh, includes both uh, reading and listening sections, and you need to uh, point out the contrasted information by the lecturer towards the reading that whatever the information is opposite. Also, we have the independent writing. Go on, continue explaining. Ah, yeah, okay. So, uh, we have independent writing. Now, we uh, write your opinion on a random topic. Uh, it has to have contained uh, 400 or 500 words. And we have to write about our opinion, include supporting evidence and personal anecdotes. And we have uh, 30 minutes to write it. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, 30 minutes to write. So within 30 minutes, you need to write 400 and uh, 500 words. But in the IELTS examination, within uh, 40 minutes, you require to write 250 words. Do you feel like that yeah. it is just or not? Is it just it's, it's fair? Mm -hmm. It's not fair, yeah. It's, Why? But you write it here, you're writing it on the computer, you're typing. Generally, we type much faster than uh, we're handwriting, right? Therefore, it is something equivalent. I don't know, uh, uh, the computer-based uh, IELTS has been re released to the market. Uh, mm -hmm. You can take the computer-based IELTS, but I don't know if the word limits are still the same in the computer-based or it's different when it's compared to the paper-based IELTS. I have no idea. But uh, at least we're, we're typing and we need to be very uh, fast in the typing, which means, uh, which is not nothing to do with the, your English language skills, but uh, somehow it's affecting. Therefore, you have to uh, 
no, let's say, or you can take some uh, typing courses if you want to or not. It, it, it depends on you, but at least you have to write very fast. And they, uh, w when it's uh, compared to IELTS, in which you can erase the, let's say, erase the wrong written words in the middle of the essay, which makes it a whole mess and confusion. But in the uh, TOEFL examination, you have to just select the part that you want to delete and then delete and continue writing and there's no any mess over your writing, right? So therefore, yeah. both of these examinations have uh, pros and cons, and we're not going to concentrate on them right now. But for the next lesson, we're gonna talk about some rubrics and the criteria that can be used in order to go to your speaking and writing skills, because in the reading and listening tests, there are exact answers. For example, the question, uh, uh, the answer for the question number one is A. There's no any further explanation needed here. In the writing test, in the speaking test, whatever you write doesn't matter, okay? As long as it fits to the certain criteria, okay? Your answer might not be right or wrong, but it can fit to certain criteria. What are those criteria? What are those rubrics? We're gonna cover them in our upcoming session. And I hope that uh, I'm going to just uh, upload it upload this lesson to the YouTube channel uh, for the display of, uh, for the display for Murat, okay? And let, let's now uh, just check out your WhatsApp. Can, can you reach out to your WhatsApp? Because uh, WhatsApp? I, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you sent uh, the message about Barron's over your yeah. reading mm -hmm. list. So these uh, are the... Uh -huh. uh, let me explain that. So these are the, let's say, assignments that you can read and do, okay, in terms of exercises. So the first one is Barron's. So I mean Barron's IBT, 15th edition, okay, which you have it in the folder. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I can show you exactly what I, whatever I'm talking about so that uh, we, can confu uh, we can avoid the confusion. Okay, let me just uh, show you my classes. So you've already uh, downloaded uh, the materials, right? Mm -hmm. That I sent yeah. you through what's, uh, what's that? Can you see my folders? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, Barron's, uh, we have Barron's TOEFL IBT 2006 and 7. Okay, you are opening this up and not this book because it's the 11th edition where i click on it here and this is the books that you need to study okay in terms of uh let's see what, what was that so baron's overview of reading and listening okay mm -hmm. so you're going to just read the overview part okay not the other parts and also mm -hmm. uh, there's a long man diagnostic and post test of reading and listening Okay, let me show you that one as well. Longman. Okay, you have Longman preparation course for the TOEFL. And as you can see, there's so many books. And I'm uh, opening this book. Maybe they are the same, but I'm opening uh, the 50, 54 megabyte book. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let, let, let me just share the book with you as well. Okay. So I'm going to increase the size. So uh, diagnostic pretest, okay, of reading and reading post test. Also, we have diagnostic pretest for listening and listen, listening post test. Okay, you're going to do these tests in the listening part. It's just for your pre. Uh, familiarization with this test that you are familiarizing yourself we haven't practiced them yet maybe to some extent we've made some economic skill uh, assessment but not all of them but uh, okay now uh, we were sharing the books and your assignments mm -hmm. let's see what other things we have here official guide reading passages questions strategies practice set one and in, in the reading part Okay, also in the same book, official guide, listening materials, questions, strategies, and listening. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's share. Uh, what, what do you see in your screen? 
my folders yeah of shoe guide okay so the name of the folder is the of the official guide to the tofu ibt okay i generally mm -hmm. open which book this 46 megabyte book okay let's open and share this one let's make it one five so here's the reading section okay so you're going to basically study reading passages reading questions which we have covered and strategies for preparing for the reading section and practice set one okay approximately uh let's say 30 pages from here and the reading test the same listen materials listen question types strategies and practice test one okay uh also but uh, again you cannot do all of them it's quite uh ostentatious okay it's just obvious that uh you can't do all of it uh, therefore you're just got, uh, trying to uh, you're going to do your best in order to reach out these goals but if you can no worries uh we're going to uh, uh maybe you're going to do it for the next time and also we have master TOEFL vocabulary the book uh, that we've been doing the test okay unit five six and seven word rules prefixes and suffixes okay let's share that mm -hmm. book as well but first of all let me show you the book so you can find uh, master TOEFL vocabulary from here peterson's okay it's here peterson's and this is the name of the book master TOEFL vocabulary and also so let's just show you which uh, which part of the book that you're required to deal with because now we are developing our general vocabulary as it is very important so uh not only in the vocabulary portion of the reading test but also when you're listening you have to understand the meanings of so many words or at least guess the meaning of the words okay uh, so the part that we've been talking about is part five, all about roots, word roots, okay? From, uh, let's say, Greek uh, uh, words with Greek roots, words with Latin roots and other roots, okay? We're going to have a look as well as prefixes and suffixes, which in total makes, uh, let's say, from 93 to 140, no, uh, 171, uh, in total, it makes up to 70 or 80 pages, okay? Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, you have read so much so far, right? Therefore, yeah. if you feel like that uh, there's some information that's the repetition and you know it, you don't have to just uh, work on it. You don't have to uh, spend so much time. Just quickly read it, which is also going to be the kind of uh, speed reading exercise for you, all right? And mm -hmm. speaking of speed reading, I'm going to also include the speed reading exercise there as well. Because first of all, we need to complete that book. And also we have tracking TOEFL IBT general strategies to improve your English and core concept vocabulary part. Okay. Uh, let's see where is that book. And I'm going to share again my uh, folder. Cracking uh, the TOEFL IBT, the 29th, uh, this is 29th edition. So let's open this book and share it. So here you're going to study, let me check it again. You're going to study general strategies to improve your English. Okay, where is that? general strategies to improve your English okay for the TOEFL study plans okay here you're going to study this part and also you will study core concept vocabulary okay core concept vocabulary these are core concepts it's about reading listening and mm -hmm. you're going to study vocabulary part okay what a book of book about root, root words Okay, they're something related to each other. Uh, let me add a core concept vocabulary. So you also need to study essential, sorry, 
essential words. Awful. So this is going to be your priority. Yeah. 21 to 30 and speed reading as always. Speed reading for dummies. Next two chapters. Next two chapters. It makes five and six, right? Chapter five and six or seven and eight? Mm -hmm. uh, it's. Should be something like five and six. Five and six, yeah. Okay. So your priority should be from uh, essential words for TOEFL. Okay, let me share. Uh, if you can't see my uh, WhatsApp. So your priority are these essential words for the TOEFL, the 10 units, and two chapters from Speed Reading for Dummies. And then you're coming here. Okay. Read the, let's say, general overviews from Barron's and then you can take the test and find out your problematic areas okay an official guide which is uh, published by the ETS the founder of total examination read these passages okay just in the order if you can't do all of them no worries at least I believe that it's going to take some time uh, if you let uh, it, it Indeed, maybe it's not going to take some time because uh, you have the pre-SAT examination, which means uh, you've already mastered word rules, prefixes, and suffixes. Uh, if you go through these very fast, then you can study all of them. But if not, in that case, uh, we're going to transfer it to the next assignment. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So for now, uh, I'm, I'm going to attend the meeting with our uh, school, with our uh, course uh, administration. Do you have any question to me right now? Uh, no. Okay, have a nice day and my regards to Murat. Hopefully he's going to be recoverable for the next lesson. And yeah. see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.